Hello, this is the Silver Watchman joining you on another episode of the Bible. Now, we are going to pick up where we left off, which was Genesis chapter 29, verse 25. So it came to pass in the morning that, behold, it was Leah. And he said to Laban, What is this you have done to me? Was it not for Rachel that I served you? Why then have you deceived me? And Laban said, It must, it must not be done so in our country to give the younger before the firstborn. Fulfill her week, and we will give you this one also for the service which you will serve with me. Still another seven years. Then Jacob did so, and fulfilled her, her week. So he gave him his daughter Rachel as wife also. And Laban gave his maid Bilhah to his daughter Rachel as a maid. Then Jacob also went to Rachel, went into Rachel, and he also loved Rachel more than Leah. And he served with Leah, Laban, still another seven years. When the Lord saw that Leah was unloved, he opened her womb, but Rachel was barren. So Leah conceived and bore a son, and she called his name Reuben. For she said, The Lord has surely looked on my affliction. Now therefore, my husband will love me. Then she conceived again and bore a son and said, Because the Lord has heard that I am unloved, he has therefore given me this son. Also, she called his name Simeon. She conceived again and bore a son and said, Now this time my husband will become attached to me because I have borne him three sons. Therefore his name was called Levi. And she conceived again and bore a son and said, Now I will praise the Lord. Therefore she called his name Judah. Then she stopped bearing. Genesis chapter 30 Now when Rachel saw that she bore Jacob no children, Rachel envied her sister and said to Jacob, Give me children, or else I die. And Jacob's anger was aroused against Rachel. And he said, Am I in the place of God, who has withheld from you the fruit of the womb? So she said, Here is my maid, Bilhah. Go into her and she will bear a child on my knees, that I also may have children by her. Then she gave him Bilhah, her maid, as a wife, and Jacob went into her. And Bilhah conceived and bore Jacob a son. Then Rachel said, God has judged my case. He has also heard my voice and given me a son. Therefore, she called his name Dan. And Rachel's maid Bilhah conceived again and bore Jacob a second son. And Rachel said, With great wrestlings have I wrestled with my sister, and indeed I have prevailed. So she called his name Naphtali. When Leah saw that she had stopped bearing, she took Zilpah, her maid and gave her to Jacob as a, as a wife. And Leah's maid Zilpah bore Jacob a son. Then Leah said, Then Leah said, A troop comes. So she called his name Gad. 
And Leah's maid, Zilpah, bore Jacob a second son. Then Leah said, I am happy for the daughters will call me blessed. Now she called his name Asher. Now Reuben went in the days of wheat harvest and found mandrakes in the field and brought them to his mother Leah. When Rachel said to Leah, please give me some of your man, some of your son's mandrakes. But she said to her, it is a small matter which you have taken away that you have taken away my husband. Would you take away my son's mandrakes also? And Rachel said, Therefore he will lie with you tonight for your son's mandrakes. When Jacob came out of the field in the evening, Leah went out to meet him and said, You must come in to me, for I have surely hired you with my son's mandrakes. And he lay with her that night. And God listened to Leah, and she conceived and bore Jacob a fifth son. Leah said, God has given me my wages because I have given my maid to my husband. So she called his name Issachar. Then Leah conceived again and bore Jacob a sixth son. And Leah said, God has endowed me with good endowment. Now my husband will dwell with me, because I have borne him six sons. So she called his name Zebulun. Afterward she bore a daughter and called her name Dinah. Then God remembered Rachel, and God listened to her and opened her womb. And she conceived and bore a son, and said, God has taken away my repro re re reproach. So she called his name Joseph, and said, The Lord shall add to me another son. And it came to pass when Rachel had borne Joseph, that Jacob said to Laban, Send me away, that I may go to my own place, and to my country. Give me my wives and my children for whom I have served you, and let me go. For you know my service, which I have done for you. And Laban said to him, Please stay. If I have found favor in your eyes, for I have learned by experience that the Lord has blessed me for your sake. Then he said, Name me your wages, and I will give it. So Jacob said to him, You know how I have served you, and how your livestock has been with me. For what you had, therefore I came, was little, and it has increased to a great amount. The Lord has blessed you since my coming, and now when I shall also when shall I also provide for my own house? So he said, What shall I give you? And Jacob said, You shall not give me anything. If you will do this thing for me, I will again feed and keep your flocks. Let me pass through all your flock today, removing from there all the speckled and spotted sheep, and all the brown ones among the lambs, the spotted and speckled among the goats, and these shall be my wages. So my righteousness will answer for me in time to come. When the subject of my wages comes before you, every one that is not speckled and spotted among the goats and brown among the lamb will be considered stolen, if it is, with me. And Laban said, Oh, that it were according to your word, so we removed that day 
the male goats that were speckled and spotted, and all the female goats that were speckled and spotted, every one that had some white in it, and all that had the brown ones among the lambs, and gave them into the hand of his sons. Then he put three days' journey between himself and Jacob. And Jacob fed the rest of Laban's flocks. Now Jacob took for himself rods of green poplar and of all almond and chestnut trees, peeled white strips in them, and exposed the white which was in the rods. And the rods which he had peeled had set he set before the flocks in the gutters in the watering trough where the flocks came to drink so they should conceive when they came to drink so the flocks conceived before the rods and the flocks brought forth streaked, speckled, and spotted then Jacob separated the lambs and made the flocks face towards the streaked and all the brown in the flocks of Laban. But he put his own flocks by themselves and did not put them with Laban's flock. And it came to pass whenever the stronger livestock conceived that Jacob placed rods before the eyes of the livestock in the gutters that they might conceive among the rods. But when the flocks were feeble, he did not put them in. So the feebler were Laban's and the stronger Jacob's. Thus the man became exceedingly prosperous and had large flocks, female and male servants, and camels and donkeys. Genesis chapter 31. Now Jacob heard the words of Laban's son, saying, Jacob has taken away all that was our father's, and from what was our father's he has acquired all this wealth. And Jacob saw the countenance of Laban, and indeed it was not favorable towards him, as before. Then the Lord said to Jacob, Return to the land of your fathers, and to your family, and I will be with you. And so Jacob sent and called Rachel and Leah to the field, to his flock, and said to him, I see your father's countenance that is not favorable towards me as before. But the God of my father has been with me, and you know with all my might I have served your father. Now your father has deceived me and changed my wages ten times, but God did not allow him to hurt me. If he said thus, The speckled shall be your wages, then all the flocks bore speckled. If he said thus, And if he said thus, The streak shall be your wages, and all the flock, then all the flocks bore streaked. So God has taken away the livestock from of your father and given them to me. And it happened at the time when the flocks conceived that I lifted my eyes and I saw in a dream, and behold, the rams which leaped upon the rocks were streaked, speckled, and gray spotted. Then the angel of God spoke to me in a dream, saying, Jacob, and I said, Here I am. And he said, Lift your eyes now and see. All the rams which leap of the flocks are streaked, speckled, and gray spotted, for I have seen all that Laban is doing to you. I am God of I am the God of Bethel, where you anointed the pillar, and where you made the vow to me. 
Now arise, get out of this land, and return to the land of your family. Then Rachel and Leah answered and said to him, Is there still any portion of or inheritance for us in our father's house? Are we not considered strangers by him, for he sold us and also completely consumed our money? For all these riches which God has taken from our father are really ours and our children's. Now then, whatever God has said to you, do it. Then Jacob rose and set his sons and his wives on camels, and he carried away all his livestock and all his possessions which he had gained. His acquired livestock which he had gained in Padan Aram to go to his father Isaac in the land of Canaan. Now Laban had gone to shear his sheep, and Rachel had stolen the household idols that were her father's. And Jacob stole away, unknown to Laban, the Syrian, in that he did not tell him that he intended to flee, so he fled with all that he had. He arose and crossed the river and headed towards the mountains of Gilead. Laban was told that on the third day that Jacob had fled. Then he took his brethren with him and pursued him for seven days journey and he overtook him in the mountains of Gilead. But God had come to Laban, the Syrian, in a dream by night, and said to him, Be careful that you speak to Jacob, neither good nor bad. So Laban overtook Jacob. Now Jacob had pitched his tent in the mountains, and Laban, with his brethren, pitched in the mountains of Gilead. And Laban said to Jacob, What have you done, that you have stolen away unknown to me and carried away my daughters like captives taken with the sword? Why did you flee away secretly and steal away from me? And not tell me, for I might have sent you away with joy and songs, with timbrel and harp, Did you not allow me to kiss my sons and my daughters? Now you have done foolishly in so doing. It is in my power to do you harm, but God your father spoke to me last night, saying, Be careful that you speak to Jacob neither good nor bad. Now you have surely gone because you greatly long for your father's house, but why did you steal my gods? Then Jacob answered and said to Laban, Because I was afraid. For I said, Perhaps he would take your daughters from me by force, with whoever you find your gods. Do not let them live in the presence of our brethren. Identify what I have of yours and take it with you. For Jacob did not know that Rachel had stolen them. And Laban went into Jacob's tent, into Leah's tent, and into the two maids' tent, but he did not find them. Then he went out of Leah's tent and entered Rachel's tent. Now Rachel had taken the household idols, put them in the camel saddle, and sat on them. And Laban searched all about the tent, but did not find them. And she said to her father, Let it not displease my lord, that I cannot rise before you. For the manner of a woman is with me. And he searched, but did not find the household idols. Then Jacob was angry and rebuked Laban. And Jacob answered and said to Laban, what is my trespass? 
What is my sin that you have so hardly pursued me? Although you have searched all my things, what part of your household things have you found? Set it here before my brethren and your brethren, that they may judge between us both. These twenty years I have been with you, your ewes and your female goats have not miscarried their young. I have not eaten the rams of your flock. That which is torn by beasts I did not bring to you. I bore the loss of it. You required it from my hand. Whether stolen by day or stolen by night. There, it, there I was in the day. The drought consumed me and the frost by night and my sleep departed from my eyes. Thus I have been in your house twenty years. I served you fourteen years for your two daughters and six years for your flock. And you have changed my wages ten times unless the God of my father, the God of Abraham, and the fear of Isaac had been with me. Surely now you would have been you would have sent me away. Empty-handed, God has seen my affliction and the labor of my hands and rebuked you last night. And Laban answered and said to Jacob, These daughters are my daughters, these children are my children, and this flock is my flock. All that you see is mine. But what can I do this day to these my daughters? or to their children whom they have borne. Now therefore, come, let us make a covenant between you and I, and let it be a witness between you and me. So Jacob took a stone and set it up as a pillar. Then Jacob said to his brethren, Gather stones. And they took stones and made a heap, and they ate there on the heap. Laban called it Jagar Sahad Dutha. But Jacob called it, called it Galid. And Laban said, This heap is the witness between you and me this day. Therefore is its name was called Galid. Also, Mitzpah because he said, May the Lord watch between you and me when we are absent from one another. If you afflict my daughters, or if you take other wives besides my daughters, although no man is with us, see, God is witness between you and me. And Laban said to Jacob, Here, here is this heap, and here is this pillar which I have placed between you and me. This heap is a witness, and this pillar is a witness, that I will not pass beyond this heap to you, and you will not pass beyond this heap, and this pillar to me, for harm. The God of Abraham, the God of Nahor, the God of their father, judge between us. And Jacob swore by the fear of his father Isaac, then Jacob offered a sacrifice on the mountain, and called his brethren to eat bread. And they ate bread, and stayed all night on the mountain. And early in the morning Laban arose, and kissed his sons and his daughters, and blessed them. Then Laban departed and returned to his place. Genesis chapter 32 So Jacob went on in his way, and the angels of God met him. When Jacob saw them, he said, This is God's camp, and he called the name of the place Mahanaim. Then Jacob sent messengers before him to Esau, his brother, in the land of Seir, the country of Eden. And he commanded them, saying, 
Speak thus to my lord, Esau. Thus your servant Jacob says, I have dwelt with Laban and stayed there until now. I have oxen, donkeys, flocks, and male and female servants, and I have sent to tell my lord that I may find favor in your sight. Then the messengers returned to Jacob, saying, We came to your brother Esau, and he also is coming to meet you, and four hundred men are with him. So Jacob was greatly afraid and distressed, and he divided the people that were with him, and the flocks and the herds and the camels into two companies. And he said, If Esau comes to one company and attacks it, then the other company which is left will escape. Then Jacob said, O God of my father Abraham, and God of my father Isaac, the Lord who said to me, Return to your country and to your family, and I will deal well with you. I am not worthy of the least of all the mercies and of all the truth which you have shown your servant. For I crossed over this Jordan with my staff, and now I have become two companies. Deliver me, I pray, from the hand of my brother, from the hand of Esau, for I fear him, lest he come and attack me, and the mother with the children. For you said, I will surely treat you well, and make your descendants as the sand of the sea, which cannot be numbered for a multitude. So he lodged there that same night, and took what came to his hand as a present for Esau, his brother, two hundred female goats and twenty male goats, two hundred ewes and twenty rams, thirty milk camels with their colts, forty cows and ten bulls, twenty female donkeys and ten foals, and he delivered them to the hand of his servants, every drove by itself, and said to his servants, Pass over me, and put some distance between successive droves. And he commanded the first one, saying, When Esau my brother meets you, and asks you, saying, To whom do you belong, and where are you going? Who are these in, in front of you? Then you shall say, They are your servant Jacob's. It is a present sent to my lord Esau. And behold, he is also behind us. So he commanded the second and the third, and all who followed the drove, saying, In this manner you shall speak to Esau when you find him. And also say, Behold, your servant Jacob is behind us. For he said, I will appease him with the present that goes before me, and afterward I will see his face, perhaps he will accept me. So the present went on over before him, but he himself lodged that night in the camp. And when he arose that night and took his two wives, his two female servants, and his eleven sons, and crossed over the fork of Jabbok. He took them, sent them over to the brook, and sent them, and sent over what he had. Then Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until the break of day. Now when he saw that he did not prevail against him, he touched the socket of his hip, and the socket of Jacob's hip was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, Let me go, for the day breaks. He, but he said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So he said to him, What is your name? He said, Jacob. And he said, Your name shall be no longer called Jacob, but Israel, for you have struggled with God and with men, and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked, saying, Tell me your name, I pray. And he said, Why is it that you ask about my name? And he blessed him there. 
So Jacob called for the name of the place Peniel. For I have seen God face to face, and my life is preserved. Just as he crossed over, Peniel, the sun rose on him, and he limped on his hip. Therefore, to this day, the children of Israel do not eat the muscle that sh that shrank, which is on the hip socket, because he touched the socket of Jacob's hip and the muscle that shrank. Genesis chapter 33. Now Jacob lifted his eyes and looked, and there Esau was coming, and with him were four hundred men. So he divided the children among Leah, Rachel, and the two maidservants. And he put the maidservants and their children in front, Leah and her children behind, and Rachel and Joseph last. Then he crossed over before them and bowed himself to the ground seven times, until he came near to his brother. But Esau ran to meet him and embraced him, and fell on his neck and kissed him, and they wept. And he lifted his eyes and saw the woman and children, and said, Who are these with you? So he said, The children whom God has graciously given your servant. And the maid servants came near, they and their children, and bowed down. And Leah also came near with her children, and they bowed down. Afterward Joseph and Rachel came near, and they bowed down. Then Esau said, What do you mean by all this company which I met? And he said, These are to find favor in the sight of my Lord. But Esau said, I have enough, my brother. Keep what you have for yourself. And Jacob said, No, please. If I have found favor in your sight, then receive my present from my hand. Inasmuch as I have seen your face, as though I have seen the face of God, and you were pleased with me, please take my blessing that it is brought to you, because God has dealt graciously with me, and because I have enough. So he urged him, and he took of it. And then Esau said, Let us take our journey. Let us go, and I will go before you. But Jacob said to him, My lord, my lord know, knows that the children are weak, and the flocks and herds which are nursing are with me. And if the men should drive them hard one day, all the flock will die. Please let my lord go on ahead before his servant, and I will lead on slowly at a pace which the livestock that go before me and the children are able to endure until I come to my lord in Seir. And Esau said, Now let me leave you, leave with you some of the people who are with me. But he said, What need is there? Let me find favor in the sight of my lord. So Esau returned that day to his way to Seir. And Jacob journeyed to Sakoth and built himself a house and made booths for his livestock. Therefore the name of the place is called Sakoth. Then Jacob came to safety, came safely to the city of Shechem, which is in the land of Canaan, which he came from Padan Aram and he pitched his tent before the city. And he bought the parcel of land where he had pitched his tent from the children of Hamor, 
Shechem's father for 100 pieces of money. Then he erected an altar there and called it El Elo Israel. Genesis chapter 34. Now Dinah, the daughter of Leah, whom she had borne to Jacob, went out to see the daughters of the land. And when Shechem, the son of Hamor, the Hivite, prince of the country, saw her, he took her and lay with her and violated her. His soul was strongly attracted to Dinah, the daughter of Jacob, and he loved the young woman and spoke kindly to the young woman. So Shechem spoke to his father, Hamor, saying, Get me this young woman as a wife. And Jacob heard that he had defiled Dinah, his daughter. Now his sons were with his livestock in the field, so Jacob held his peace until they came. Then Hamor, the father of Shechem, went out to Jacob to speak with him. And the sons of Jacob came in from the field when they heard it. The men were grieved and very angry because he had done a disgraceful thing in Israel by lying with Jacob's daughter, a thing that ought not to be done. But Hamor spoke with them, saying, The soul of my son, Shechem, longs for your daughter. Please give her to him as a wife, and make marriage marriages with us. Give your daughters to us and take our daughters to yourselves, so you shall dwell with us, and the land shall be before you. Dwell and trade in it, and acquire possessions for yourselves in it. Then Shechem said to her father and her brothers, Let me find favor in your eyes, and whatever you say to me I will give. Ask me ever so much dowry and gift, and I will give according to what you say to me. But give me the young woman as a wife. But the sons of Jacob answered Shechem and Hamor his father, and spoke deceitfully, because he had defiled Dinah their sister. They said to them, We cannot do this thing, to give our sister to one who is uncircumcised, for that would be a reproach to us. But on this condition we will consent to you. If you become as we are, if every male of you is circumcised, then we will give our daughters to you, and we will take your daughters to us, and we will dwell with you, and we will become one people. But if you will not heed us and be circumcised, then we will take our daughter and be gone. And their words pleased Hamor and Shechem, Hamor's son. So the young man did not delay to do the thing, because he was delighted in Jacob's daughter. He was more honorable than all the household of his father. And Hamor and Shechem, his son, came to the gate of their city and spoke with the men of their city, saying, These men are at peace with us, therefore let them dwell in the land and trade in it, for indeed the land is large enough for them. Let us take their daughters to us as wives, and let us give them our daughters, only on the condition On this condition, will the men consent to dwell with us, to be one people, if every male among us is circumcised, as they are circumcised. Will not their livestock, their property, and every animal of theirs be ours? Only let us consent to them, and they dwell with us, and they will dwell with us. 
and all who went out of the gate of his city, he did Hamor and Shechem his son. Every male was circumcised, all who went out of the gate of his city. Now it came to pass on the third day, when they were in pain, that two of the sons of Jacob, Simeon and Levi, died as brothers. Each took his sword and came boldly upon the city and killed all the males. And they killed Hamor and Shechem his son with the edge of the sword and took Dinah from Shechem's house and went out. The sons of Jacob came up, came upon the slain and a plundered city because their sister had been defiled. They took their sheep, their oxen, and their donkeys, what was in the city and what was in the field, and all of their wealth, all their little ones, and their wives they took captive. They plundered even all that was in the houses. Then Jacob said to Simeon and Levi, You have troubled me by making up not by making me obnoxious among the inhabitants of the land, among the Canaanites and the Perizzites. And since I am few in number, they will gather themselves together against me and kill me. I shall be destroyed, my household and I. But they said, Should he treat our sister like a harlot? Genesis chapter 35 Then God said to Jacob, Arise, go up to Bethel and dwell there, and make an altar there to God who appeared to you when you fled from the face of Esau, your brother. And Jacob said to his household, and to all who are with him, Put away the foreign gods that are among you, purify yourselves, and change your garments. Then let us arise and go up to Bethel, and I will make an altar there to God, who answered me in the day of my distress, and has been with me in the way which I have gone. So they gave Jacob all foreign gods, all the foreign gods which they which were in their hands, and the ear, earrings which were in their ears, and Jacob hid them under a terebinth tree, which was by Shechem. And they journeyed, and the terror of God was upon the cities that were all around them, and they did not pursue the sons of Jacob. So Jacob came to Luz, that is Bethel, which is the land of Canaan. He and all the people were with him, who were with him. He built an altar there and called the place El Bethel because there God appeared to him when he fled from the face of his brother. Now Deborah, Rebekah's nurse, died. She was buried below Bethel under the terebinth tree. So the name of it was called Alan Bakuth. Then God appeared to Jacob again when he came from Padan Aram and blessed him. And God said to him, Your name is Jacob. Your name shall not be called Jacob anymore, but Israel shall be your name. So he called his name Israel. Also God said to him, I am God Almighty. Be fruitful and multiply. A nation and a company of nations shall proceed from you, and kings shall come from your body. The land which I gave Abraham and Isaac I give to you, and to your descendants after you I give this land. Then God went up from him in the place where he talked with him. 
So Jacob set up a pillar in a place where he had talked with him. A pillar of stone. He poured a drink offering on it, and he poured oil on it. And Jacob called the name of the place where God spoke with him, Bethel. Then they journeyed from Bethel, and when there was but a little distance to go to Ephrath, Rachel labored in childbirth, and she had hard labor. Now it came to pass, when she was in hard labor, that the midwife said to her, Do not fear, you will have this son also. And so it was, as her soul was departing, for she died, that she called his name Ben-Oni, but his father called him Benjamin. So Rachel died and was buried on the way to Ephrath, that is, Bethlehem. And Jacob set a pillar on her grave, which is the pillar of Rachel's grave to this day. Then Israel journeyed and pitched its tent beyond the tower of Eder. And it happened, when Israel dwelt in that land, that Reuben went and lay with Bilhah, his father's concubine, and Israel heard about it. Now the sons of Jacob were twelve. The sons of Leah were Reuben, Jacob's firstborn, and Simeon. Leah, Levi, Judah, Issachar, and Zebulon. The sons of Rachel were Joseph and Benjamin. The sons of Bilhah, Rachel's maidservant were Dan and Naphtali, and the sons of Zilpah, Leah's maidservant, were Gad and Asher. These were the sons of Jacob who were born to him in Padan Aram. Then Jacob came to his father Isaac at Mamre, or Kirjath Arba that is, Hebron, where Abraham and Isaac had dwelt. Now the days of Isaac were 180 years, so Isaac breathed his last and died, and was gathered to his people, being old and full of days. And his sons Esau and Jacob buried him. Genesis chapter 36 Now this is the genealogy of Esau, who is Edom. Esau took his wives from the daughters of, of Canaan, Ada, the daughter of Elon, the Hittite, Aholabama, the daughter of Anna, the daughter of Zebian, the Hitt Hivite, and Basemath, Ishmael's daughter, sister of Nabajoth. Now Ada bore Eliphaz to Esau, and Baseman, Basemath bore Reu, and Aholabama bore Jeus. Jalam and Korah. These were the sons of Esau who were born to him in the land of Canaan. Then Esau took his wives, his sons, his daughters, and all persons of his household, his cattle, and all his animals, 
and all his goods, which he had gained in the land of Canaan, and went to a country away from the presence of his brother, Jacob. But their possessions were too great for them to dwell together, and a land where they were strangers could not support them because of their livestock. So Esau dwelt, dwelt in Mount Seir. Esau is Edom. And this is the genealogy of Esau, the father of the Edomites and Mount Seir. These were the names of Esau's sons, Eliphaz, the son of Ada, the wife of Esau, Reu, the son of Basemath, the wife of Esau. And the sons of Eliphaz were Teman, Omar, Zepho, Gadam, and Kenaz. Now Timnah was the concubine of Eliphaz, Esau's son, and she bore Amalek to Eliphaz. These were the sons of Ada, Esau's wife. These were the sons of Reu, Nahath, Zorah, Shammah, and Mizah. These were the sons of Basemath, Esau's wife. These were the sons of Aholabama, Esau's wife. The daughter of Anna, the daughter of Zebian, and she bore to Esau, Jeush, Jalam, and Korah. These were the chiefs of the sons of Esau, the sons of Eliphaz, the firstborn son of Esau, were chief Taman, chief Omar, chief Zepho, chief Kanaz, chief Korah, chief Gadam, and chief Amalek. These were the chiefs of Eliphaz in the land of Edom. They were the sons of Ada. These were the sons of Reu, Esau's son, chief Nahath, chief Zerah, chief Shammah, and chief Mizah. These were the chiefs of Reu in the land of Edom. These were the sons of Basemath, Esau's wife. And these were the sons of Aholabama, Esau's wife, Chief Jayush, Chief Jalam, and Chief Korah. And these were the chiefs who, were, who descended from Aholabama, Esau's wife, the daughter of Anna. These were the sons of Esau, who was Edom. And these were their chiefs. These were the sons of Se Seir, the Horite, who inhabited the land. Lotan, Shabal, Zibian, Anna, Dishan, Ezer, and Dishan. These were the chiefs of the Horites, the sons of Seir, in the land of Edom. And the sons of Lotan were Hori and Haman. Lotan's sister was Timnah. These were the sons of Shobal, Alvin, Manahath, Ebal, Shephel, and Onam. These were the sons of Zibian, both Aja and Anna. This was the Anna who found the water in the wilderness as he pastured the donkeys of his father Zibian. These were the children of Anna, Dishan, and Aholabama, the daughter of Anna. These were the sons of Dishan, Hemdan, Eshban, Ithran, and Charan. These were the sons of Ezer. Bilhan, Zavan, 
and Akan. These were the sons of Deshen, Uz, and Aran. These were the chiefs of the Horites, Chief Lotan, Chief Shobao, Chief Zibian, Chief Anna, Chief Jishan, Chief Ezer, and Chief Deshan. These were the chiefs of the Horites according to their chiefs in the land of Seir. Now these were the kings who reigned in the land of Edom before any kings reigned over the children of Israel. Bela, the son of Bor, reigned in Edom, and the name of his city was Dinhaba. When Be Bela died, Jobab, the son of Zerah, of Basra, reigned in his place. When Jobab died, Husham of the land of the Temanites reigned in his place. When Husham died, Hadad the son of Bedad, who attacked Midian in the field of Moab, reigned in his place, and the name of the city was Avith. When Hadad died. Samla of Masreka reigned in his place. When Samla died, Saul of Rehoboth by the river reigned in his place. When Saul died, Baal Hanan, the son of Akbor, reigned in his place. When Baal Hanan, the son of Akbor, died, Hadar reigned in his place. When the name of the city was Pau, his wife, his wife's name was Mehedabel, the daughter of Matred, the daughter of Mezahab. And these were the names of the chiefs of Esau, according to their families and their places by their names. Chief Timna, Chief Avla, Alva, Chief Je Jeheth, Chief Aholabama, Chief Elah, Chief Pinan, Pin, Pinion, Pinan, Chief. Kenaz, Chief Teman, Chief Miz, Mib, Mibzar, Chief Magdil, and Chief Aram. These were the chiefs of Edom, according to their dwelling places in the land of their possession. Esau was a father of the Edomites. Genesis chapter 37. Now Jacob dwelt in a land where his father was a stranger in the land of Canaan. This is the history of Jacob. Joseph, being seventeen years old, was feeding the flock with his brothers. And the land and the lad was with the sons of Buha and the sons of Zilpah his father's wives, and Joseph brought a bad report to them, of them to his father. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children, because he was the son of his old age. Also, he made him a tunic of many colors. But when his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all his brothers, they hated him and could not speak peaceably to him. Now Joseph had a dream, and he told it to his brothers, and they hated him even more. So he said to them, Please hear this dream which I have dreamed. There we were, binding sheaves in the field. Then behold,
My sheaf arose and also stood upright. Indeed, your sheaves stood uh, all around and bowed down to my sheaf. And his brother said to him, Shall you indeed reign over us? Or shall you indeed have dominion over us? So they hated him even more, for his dreams and for his words. Then his dreamed still another dream, and told it to his brothers, and said, Look, I have dreamed another dream, and this time the sun, the moon, and the eleven stars bowed down to me. So he told it to his father and his brothers, and his father rebuked him and said to him, What is this dream that you have dreamed? Shall your mother and I and your brothers indeed come to bow down to the earth before you? And his brothers envied him, but his father kept the matter in mind. Then his brothers went to feed their father's flock in Shechem. And Israel said to Joseph, Are you not your brothers feeding the flock in Shechem? Come, and I will send you, send you to them. So he said to them, Here I am. And they said to him, Please go and see if it is well with your brothers, with the flocks, and bring back word to me. So he sent him out to the valley of Hebron, and he went to Shechem. Now a certain man found him, and there he was, wandering in a field. And the man asked him, saying, What are you seeking? And so he said, I am seeking my brothers. So please tell me where they are, feeding their flocks. Um, that appears to be all the time I have for this episode. Thank you for joining me on this episode of the Bible. If you liked the video, uh, please leave a like. Um, you could also share it to give it a little bit more notoriety. Uh... And may glory be to God this day that he has made. Amen.